Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Roger Bybee. Roger, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to That's talk quite to all us right. today. So we'll talk about the next generation uh, science uh, standards. Let's start off with uh, classroom teachers. What would you, how would you urge uh, classroom teachers to embrace the standards? First and probably foremost, I would encourage classroom teachers to read and study the framework, which was the basis for the standards, and then read and study the standards. Uh, right after that, the second related idea, recommendation, would be to think about what are the implications of the standards for their classroom teaching, right. for the curriculum in their school, and for the assessments, both in their classrooms and if, if there are state assessments or district assessments in their schools and so on. So what are the kind of, if you like, practical uses of the standards for teachers in the classroom? Well, the practical uses would be the, the combining of content with major competencies, the inclusion of uh, science and engineering practices, and, and to learn about those practices and develop the abilities of the practices uh, within the context of science. The, probably the third point that I would put on that is to, the, that the standards make, as they're implemented, make connections to the English language arts and the common core standards that many states have also adopted. Right. So the, that, that connection, and one of, one of critical issue I think, is English language arts and mathematics are traditionally, historically, the basics, and by making the connection to those, you're connecting science to the basics. Now, I, as far as I understand it, the uh, standards have been adopted by 11 states and That's the right. District of uh, Columbia. And the Virgin Islands. How do you feel that that rollout is uh, going? Is that pretty much where you'd expect it to be right now? Actually, um, uh, I think it's even better that the, the standards were released just about exactly a year ago and to have seven states, uh, which represent the majority of students in schools these days, um, having those states adopted, adopt the standards and, and begin the critical task of implementing them, changing curriculum, changing assessments and so on. So I, I'm very positive about so that. So what has to happen within those states that adopt the standards, sort of kind of what happens now if you like? Well, the, once the standards are in the states, <clears throat> if you think about the channels of influence, what channels uh, will, will the standards influence? One is the assessment and teacher accountability in the states, right. and I realize that's controversial in many ways, but that's one channel. A second channel is undergraduate uh, teacher preparation certification, and also the professional development of teachers in classrooms already and the third is curriculum in schools and instructional strategies and techniques in classrooms. Now finally, uh, Roger, what happens in states where the standards haven't been adopted for whatever reason? Yeah, uh, usually probably for political reasons um, and what I would encourage in those states and probably what will happen is for, for the leaders in those states to go back and, and begin by looking at the framework for K-12 science education, which is a National Academy of Science document, reviewed by scientists, so, so most of the elements of that are, you know, have been reviewed and approved. Right. Um, and to start there and think about how would the framework influence the standards in those documents. So you avoid kind of the political issue of the NGSS, um, and, and to go through the, what is the content, what competencies are we talking about, and so on. Back to the framework. Well, Roger, thank you ever so much for taking the time with us. We appreciate it's it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.